All right, hey everybody, it's Tony with Black Top Magazine. We're here for another episode of Ben Tracing with Jersey and T-Bone. Jersey, how you doing, man? You know, it's still recovering from SEMA a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know, it doesn't seem like that long ago, then again, it seems like yesterday. Yeah, and here we are already prepping for next year. So right, it's like, right. Yeah. Ugh. Playing, playing catch up after SEMA is the hardest part. Imagine if you went to PRI also. I'd love to go to PRI. <laughs> I know. But not work it, right? <laughs> no, not work it, just go. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. I think that would be a sensory overload. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's from what I understand, it's like Central Hall times 10. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all the race and performance guys. But it's the, without, I, the big difference from SEMA is it's, it's strictly motorsports, I guess, mm. from what I understand. Oh, okay. I don't know if race. It, yeah, it's all race related, so. Yeah. So you're not going to find, well, I guess you would find a rap company there, you know, to do rap yeah. and race cars. Yeah, because they're not painting race cars anymore. <laughs> they're wrapping them now. Yeah. All right. Well, you know what? Talking about PRI, we're talking about performance and all that, kind of brings us into our topic of this time, right? I guess muscle cars. Muscle cars and aftermarket um, upgrade. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Dealers, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's along the lines of Shelby and, and Yanko and right, Nikki and, and Nikki, right. And obviously those are the popular ones. But then you get into stuff like Royal Pontiac or, or Mr. Norms. Oh wow, right. there's a ton of them. Don't get me started. <laughs> We're gonna get you started here. <laughs> so you know that term muscle car gets pushed around all the time, and and you know it's like when was the first muscle car, and, and what was the first muscle car. Uh, so why don't we start with that? You know, what do you think is the first muscle? Well, car? I think, I, I think the general assumption that that John DeLorean is is he's he's the godfather as far as forcing the companies to to realize that they needed to put some higher horsepower motors in these midsize sedans, and that's and that's really where you know high horsepower, low weight, it's a concept of muscle car. Right, right. But I think I really think. Mopar and Dodge kind of had it dialed in a little bit earlier mm -hmm. with with the, the Hemi cars and um, you know even Chris, the, the Christine car the 58 Fury just just the way that these cars were set up widespread dual carburetors you right. know you know they were they were hinting at something so it's uh, now the Christine car I mean, that's a really heavy car so mm -hmm. it's not necessarily a big motor small body you know or small car uh, and but they were getting at that whole it's about performance, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I was watching a video recently, uh, like I do, <laughs> and uh, this guy uh, kind of made a suggestion that the first muscle car could be the 49 Oldsmobile uh, Rocket 88. Yeah, because you had Oldsmobile doing wild things like like tri power setups with that big straight V8. Yeah, well, even the straight eight Buicks were monsters. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but when you broke the motors down, you know, the pistons were like little teacups. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but he was also uh, saying that there wasn't anything else about this car. It wasn't a. Uh, it wasn't built as a luxury car. Uh, there wasn't a lot of safety features either. But again, we're talking about forty nine. Uh, but it was just purpose built as performance. Mm -hmm that it could be, although the term muscle car wouldn't have been around at that time. No. Uh, and then like you said, yeah, DeLorean with the 64 GTO. Well, that's who they, they really credit right. for. Because, and I think it's because he went, he kind of put the screws to, to GM and said, listen, mm -hmm. you know, he, he wanted to tap into a younger market. And you know, this is probably just before Ford was really getting into their younger market with the Mustang or, or the Falcons. And obviously the, the Mustang was marketed towards a younger crowd. Right. Right. Um, but it was, you know, that they, they still call them pony cars. So yeah. obviously it's more along the lines of a sports car. Right, right. Uh, and I was thinking about, you know, that term pony car too. Uh, you know, who came up with that? You know, was it the Mustang? Because it's a horse? I don't know. You know? Well, that's, I mean. And that was 64 and a half. But. That's, that's, a good, that's a good subject to research, I think. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, even the E-body um, Dodges, the Challengers yeah. and the Cudas fall into right. that market. The Camaros and the Firebirds fall into that market, and this is something that they ended up taking these cars, uh, SCCA racing and Trans Am racing. Right, right. And what's even funnier is the Trans Am is named after a race that you couldn't race the car in. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, they licensed that name. Pontiac did yeah. to use it. I thought that was pretty interesting. Well, and it was you know, because it was, it was because of the motor categories. Uh -huh. you know, I believe it had to be like a five-liter motor. Oh, okay. 
And then uh, Ford came out with that, uh, was it the 69 Mustang Boss 429? Mm. And they, but that... I was, don't think they were for road racing. <laughs> no, they, in fact, what they said is that um, they, they put that motor in that car so they could race it at NASCAR. Mm -hmm. And that's what it was about, is about having that being, then they could use that motor in their bigger cars for NASCAR well, that, racing. Well, the homologation effort. Yeah. basically what they call it. Uh, yeah. sell on, uh, race on Sunday, buy on Monday. All right, right. It was right. a promotion program that, where they felt if you won on Sunday, more people were apt to go to the dealerships on Monday and say, I want the car I just sold in. <laughs> and that's where, the, that's where the whole wing car concept comes right. from too. Right. Uh, yeah, those were just nuts. The, the, was it the Daytona was the first one in 68? So, no, Daytona was 69, but the, the predecessor is actually the Cornette 500. Oh, okay. It, 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 it has the... You ever notice on a charger the, the back window goes like this? Uh huh. Well, on the 500 they pushed it flat to the coves. Oh, okay. So that when the air comes over, there's not a dead space. Ah. And then what they did was they took the 68 coronet grill and put it in the charger, took the hideaways away, <laughs> so you took the cavity out and right. pushed everything forward. Wow. Oh. And then I guess they did. I'm not. I'm not sure how many there are, but I know the the numbers are really low on them. And then mm. you get into the Daytonas, and Dodge played again with the numbers. There's more Superbirds than there is Daytonas. Mm -hmm. It's it's a numbers game. Well, because Superbird came the year later. Right, Superbirds were seven. And I think that was because of Petty. It could be. Because he be. wanted to race the big wing car, and he couldn't get away from Plymouth and go to Dodge. Right. They said the next year they brought it into the Superbird. Yeah, and then, then Ford also tried their hand at it, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, the King, I believe they're called King Cobras, uh, the King Cobra Torinos. Yeah. There's not many of them. There's only... I think there's only four or five left. Even. Right. <clears throat> I seen one recently too, where they they even extended the hood to get that a oh, little yeah. bit of a rake down. They extended yeah. the hood and the nose down. And a lot of a people bit. despise it. They despise right. those cars. But I don't think you know they're looking at them aesthetically and just saying, ah, it's just a, not a pleasing car to the eye. But they're they're really significant automobiles. Right. And I mean the ones that do exist, they exist in high end collections. I think there might even be one in the brothers collection. Oh wow. Okay. Hey, did you know we have blacktop trading cards? That's right. You can get your car on a cool trading card and share it with your friends at car shows and that sort of thing. Blacktop trading cards. Check it out at blacktopmagazine.com slash cards. Uh, you know, and this brings me back to, shoot, when we first met when I was working over at Classic Industries. Mm -hmm. And that's the first time I ever heard of the term COPO. Central Office Production Order. Yeah, and uh, those what, cars. What's weird is initially Central Office Production Orders were mainly used for fleet vehicles. Oh. Okay. It was a way to, to, to get cars optioned or vehicles optioned the way you wanted them. So if you wanted a fleet vehicle that you know said was, was heater delete, radio delete, obviously you, you don't want your people screwing around. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> or even enjoying any creature comforts, right. <laughs> but but that was that was the way you did it. You, you filled out the copo paperwork and and it it kind of bypassed all the red tape. Mm. And then you had guys starting to figure out, well, hey, I could put have, the you know, <laughs> and, then, and then that kind of jumps back to to guys like Bill Thomas, who it, when as soon as the Camaros were introduced, he was one of the first guys to really take the Corvette four twenty sevens and stuffed them in these pony cars. <laughs> but yeah, when I heard about that, and then there's, I've always seen those cars with the badges on the back that might say Nikki, or mm -hmm. then you see the Yanko stickers, and of course at Classic Industries, uh, they're big with the Yanko, so. Well, they actually own the trademark to the Yanko name now. Yeah, that's wild. And um, I, last our last get together, we were talking about how I went to Saratoga to, mm -hmm. to represent us for a Yanko show, and I got to meet Don Yanko's daughter. Man. And to sit and, and rap with her and just and, and to just hear some of the first hand stories was mind blowing. And, yeah. and she was she was free with the information. She was glad she was glad to have somebody to 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 talk to about it. And it That's wild. It's something I, and the more the longer I'm in this business, the more the more unique people I meet. And right. and her, meeting her was definitely is, is high up on my list. Right. Right. All right. So uh, do you have a favorite? muscle car um has to be the 73 motion performance <laughs> phase three camaro oh wow okay um they were just 73 okay i'm picturing it now, now. i mean they're not the most i guess liked camaros 
Okay. But you sprinkle a little motion magic on them. And, and Joel Rosen said, you know, how fast do you want to go? That's going to depend on how much it's going to cost. Right. You know? <laughs> and he had a guarantee that these cars would run 11.5s. Uh -huh. And he was no joke, man. And yeah. I, if, you, if you're wondering, this is motion performance out of Long Island, New York. Mm -hmm. And they were also involved with Baldwin Chevrolet. Yeah, so see, you, I remember Baldwin motion. You'll, you'll right. always hear the two names mentioned together, okay. but they motion operated on his on his own as well you could buy a car and take it to him there's only there's actually one 69 buick gs 400 that he built okay so there's 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 a couple freaks floating around there's uh -huh. a buick gsx floating around that, that he built as well yeah and you know it's his because it's got it's the only gsx that has keystone mags on it oh interesting it's a weird car but wow if it says motion you know it's good that's not the one that's in your garage. Though. No, I, I wish. <laughs> <Right>. I wish. <laughs>